Hello and welcome to this Big Clipper video. In this video I'm going to show you how I went about doing another Cuddling the Dinosaur diorama and it was a lot of fun. So it's a 3D print that I did, it's not really about the 3D print though, it's all about the diorama and putting it onto a display piece and maybe give you some ideas for how you can turn some things into an item which is, well it's actually currently on display in our lounge so there, I think it's good enough to show. Uh, and maybe this will give you some ideas as well. So do let me know in the comments below what you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd reply to every single one of them, so don't be shy. Uh, and I really hope that you enjoy the video and thank you very much for watching. So I just really badly overbixed a batch of the modeling compound and that will probably let you know roughly when I'm filming this. <laughs> um, it was for the uh, Battle Games Middle Earth bridge build and it is already going off and I hate waste, so I'm going to try to make use of this um, for this next dinosaur racer diorama here. Now this, uh, um, this is going to mean it's going to jump to a slightly higher point in the priorities, so I'll probably start painting this up soon. But my plan for this was, and I might not have quite enough air dry clay even also not air dry clay modeling compound to achieve this but at least i can start and i can mock it up my plan is to have the dinosaur rider here and have a grassy bank on this side so this will need to be smoothed out quite a lot from what it is now because obviously like i say it's a uh, Going off a bit, a bit dry unfortunately, a bit drier than what I'd normally use. And then to have some stones and what have you, or maybe a, a small tree or something on the other side, and a path coming between these two features. So I'm going to get this in place and smoothed off. You just saw me dunk my hand in a cup of water. That really helps to smooth modeling compound if your hands are wet. It also means you can clean it off. So I need to get myself a, a paper towel to wipe the, the sides of this because I don't want that staining with white really. I want to keep that wooden effect. So there we are, this is going to be a good start for this and I will have to come back to this when I finish painting the miniature and do the whole of the rest of the of the scenic base but at least I've not wasted the uh, modelling compound and I've made a start. So I'll go out, I'll go wash my hands, wipe the sides of that, I shall do that now. I've got a, a towel on the side. So let's just get rid of all the modelling compound and what have you that's on the side. Because I really don't want that white there. There we are. Clean that off. Let that dry. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, I'll also start to paint up the actual miniature as well. So that will come back onto the, uh, come back onto the radar. But that's the rough idea that uh, he's going to be here. There's a path. And then I'll put something here, maybe some stones or some or some trees or something. So, yeah, I'm quite pleased actually, accidentally to have a, have an overrunner material and get started on that. It's pretty cool. So this happened, which I'm not massively surprised about, but uh, I'm going to have to handle it. Obviously, the surface that I was um, putting the modelling compound onto was very very smooth, and this modelling compound is basically papier mâché with uh, plaster, um, and that's not that's not adhesive. So what I need to do is rough up the area where I'm going to stick it down and then I'm going to use PVA and I'm going to glue it back down again. So it's not the end of the world, but it is just a little bit more or uh, an extra step. So I've got some sandpaper, some quite rough, um, quite high grit sandpaper, um, if it tells me what it is, 120 grit. I'm just going to sand this area here and then brush it off so there's no dust on it and then we'll put, use PVA to stick it back in place. So I'll get that done. Okay. 
here we are. I've finally finished painting this. It's been sat on my bench and I've been doing it in bits and bats, but then a couple of days ago I decided to just get it finished, so I've done it. It's very, very basic, a uh, very basic paint scheme. Uh, normal flesh with a wash for the body of the man, uh, and then I did a very, very thin watered down black red from Vallejo for the body, and then did a golden yellow for the stripes, and then the actual saddle is um, a, another yellow, a different yellow, I can't remember exactly which one, with a very heavy Agrax wash over the top. And that looks exactly how I want it to. I'm very, very pleased with how that's come out. It's been a lot of fun painting that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick that down using PVA into place. So that's just going to be stuck down there. I'm going to leave the base on and then I'll leave that to dry. And once that's dried, then we'll be able to start working on the rest of the uh, the little diorama, which is quite exciting. As I say, this has been kind of in progress for quite a long time. So just a little smear of PVA on the bottom. You don't need too much because I will be bedding this in with other scenic and terrain elements. Obviously, I'm going to need to because I don't want to grab a grey plastic thing going on underneath. So, uh, yeah, there we are. We'll glue that in place. Uh, that needs to come a little bit further forward. There we are. We'll glue it in place there. And uh, yeah, let that dry and then we'll come back and finish off the scenery around it. Very, very pleased to have got to this stage now. In the same way as for my uh, dino racer diorama, I want to leave some of the wood exposed. That's quite important to me. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw roughly where I'm going to leave exposed. I might actually bring that a little bit further forward like that. And I'm also going to leave exposed at the back here. And I've got this rock which I want to put as a as a counterpoint to that little lump there. So I'm going to, I might actually even do that and leave, leave it exposed behind the rock as well. And then we can put the um, and then that can go, that can be like that. And what I'm going to do in that bit here, I'm not explaining very well, a bit tired, and I, I broke my toe today, so sorry, I'm a little bit in pain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the stone down using the, um, using the super strong glue that I like, and I'm going to put a thin skim of the modelling compound over the rest of this. Now, if you remember, the, the, I might need to come in and sand that, before I put any modelling compound down and then I might need to put a thin PVA layer before I put the modelling compound down so that it actually sticks because if you remember that actually popped off but this modelling compound is going to go over the top of the um, of the base as well so that's going to cover up the grey base um, so I'll get that done I won't film this because it's the same, exactly the same as you've already seen so that'll be a bit repetitive but once it's done I'll bring you back and show what it looks like uh, I think I am just going to come in here with a bit of a, of a rough um, sand and sand down everywhere that's um, on the other side of the line so that it actually does stick. So um, so I'll get the sandpaper, sand that down, make a very small mix of the modelling compound, glue that in place at the same time as putting the modelling compound in and then it'll be a case of finishing off with the colours and the textures. So yeah, getting close on this now actually, so I think it's going to rush to completion. This was quite difficult actually to do, uh, to get that in as smooth and as nicely as I, as I wanted. Uh, and I think I'm happy enough with it, but it's not quite perfect. But we're going to come on, we're going to carry on because, well, I uh, can't change anything now. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is painting on some brown grout mixed with a very little bit of grit just to give it uh, some texture and PVA. If you want to know how I do this, there's a video in the description of every one, the link in the description of every one of my videos showing this technique and I find this to be a really good way of getting a very very subtle texture for the smaller scale stuff. Now obviously this isn't smaller scale but I still want a very subtle texture on this one uh, so I use this a lot for my 20 millimeter type things um, but it also works well just if you're looking at giving a subtle subtle colour. So again I would normally recommend that you use an older brush when you're doing this but because of the detail that I need to get I'm actually using a relatively new brush. This is a very cheap brush from the local maxi market which is like a, a local supermarket type thing. So it's not a special brush but it's new so it's still got enough control so I can get in and not go over where I don't want to. 
So I'm going to paint this over the whole of it uh, and then let that dry and then I'll come in with some dry brushes and I will uh, be sure to bring you along when I get to the next stage. Uh, but this is rushing towards conclusion now which is awesome and I've already picked out the next miniature I'm going to do in this little series. So I decided on this to do a little bit more of an involved base than I was initially going to do. Uh, and I pulled out my box of tricks with these aquarium or fake plants, whatever. And I found that I only had one pack of these, one a small amount of these red flowers left. And this is really what I was wanting to use. So I asked Angela when she was in town to pick some more up and she's knocked it out of the park because not only she picked up those lovely red ones, she's found these, which I just absolutely love. They are superb. So I'm going to have to go and get more of those. Um, <laughs> I really, really like those. But she's brought in a load of the red ones. And as I said, that's what I really want to focus on on this build. Um, and also some some interesting um, other ones. I've, I told her my, uh, that it was, should be a prehistoric type of jungle. And you can see that some of these are going to be really, really good for that as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically glue these in place all, all over the place, all along this, this ridge here mainly. Uh, and I might do a slightly different bush on this side. So this side is going to be these red plants and I'm going to do them really, really thick. So to do that, I'm actually going to cut off this bottom little section here and probably just use hot glue uh, and put a little dab of hot glue on the bottom of each one, push it in place, more hot glue, put it in place and just build up all the way around, like I say, so this ridge is all with beautiful, a big hedge of red, of red flowers. So I'm going to get that done. So I'll get my hot glue gun warmed up and, uh, and get going. I'll put some music on. Uh, I might mix it up with a couple of other plants. I have some others that I thought I might mix in there. These ones in particular are, are, are awesome as well for the for what I've got in mind. Um, but having seen this, I'm just I just love it. That might have to be what I do on the other side. To be honest, I might do a, a big clump of this on the other side. Uh, maybe even literally tie that together, snip it off here, and hot glue it in place because that is just wonderful <laughs> so thanks Angela you really really did, did me a solid there so yeah so I'll get myself set up I'm going to work on this side first because I know what I want uh, and um, then we'll have a look at the other side when that's done when that's all dried so yeah I'll pop some music on and let's get this done I am super pleased with how this is turning out and I've decided on the next step as well and this is going to be really simple so there'll be no music. What I've got is the lovely fake flowers that uh, Angela managed to find me and there's five sp uh, stalks and I'm just going to snip each one off now and I'm going to glue them in place as they are on these thick stalks. So uh, let's get that cut. So it turns out that it looks like they have 
metal inside them, which I didn't know. <laughs> so I probably should have used snips, but these are very, very strong scissors. So with those now done, what I'm going to do is keep them all nicely together and glue them in place as a single bunch using the hot glue gun. And then that is going to go basically here. So we'll put a load of hot glue in. And what I'll then do is come along with some traditional flocks and other things to kind of hide the hot glue lumps and to also just keep developing this kind of prehistoric vibe. I do hate hot glue though, it does make a real mess if you even touch it a little bit too early. But the good thing is with it is, is you can actually carve that away. So where I've got a big blob and a huge mess, it doesn't have to stay like that. Um, I'll be able to carve that away. So there we are, let's just hold that. And then that is the second side. And then like I say, it's gonna be bushes and lower level stuff, which I'll add on to hide the lumps of hot glue that I've got there. And then it's done, but I'm really pleased with that. So uh, thank you, Angela, again, for these wonderful flowers that you found for me. They do look just perfect. So. Okay, so you can see that there's a dirty great big white hot glue dollop there and also obviously I need to finish off the rest of this kind of, I want to leave the path brown but I need to finish off the rest of this side. And so what I'm doing is I'm gathering together some materials, I've got this green scrubbing stuff which I really like and I've got my red flock or red clump foliage which I, uh, which I just made myself and I've also got a whole load of other bits and pieces like I think I'm going to go with these purple uh, clumps. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come along, uh, I'm probably not going to film all of this because it's going to be a little bit of a, a labour of inspiration rather than rush, but I'm just going to come along and using PVA glue, uh, what I do know I'm going to do is I'm going to stick that red bit in there because I looked at that and that's where I want it to be. So I can smear the PVA around a bit onto the base and set that in there and that covers up quite a lot of that horrible kind of uh, glue gl glue clump and then I've got other tufts and what have you that I've got from Serious Play as well as these ones that I can't remember where I got them from, the random purple ones so I'm going to put some tufts and clumps and uh, just basically build up around underneath both sides of the path to make it uh, to basically this will be the finishing touches to make it to make it look nice. Uh, so I'll get that done. I'm going to turn the camera off because I want to be able to move around and not worry about where my uh, where where I'm getting in the way. But I'll bring you back when I've done and show what it looks like, and then we will finish off by sealing it all uh, with uh, with probably going to need to seal this with three or four applications of PVA watered down PVA. But I'll tell you all about that. But we're really close to this now, so let's just get this final touches done. I'll bring you back very shortly. So this is done and can now have some pictures taken and then go for display. So we're on shaky cam because I had the idea of putting at the back there just a single tulip. Now I'm not sure you'd have tulips back in the day when dinosaurs were running around but I don't care. It's a little easter egg that, uh, that is hidden away from most people's sight but I know it's there and now you do as well. And these are just beautiful these plants that we get from our local hardware shop and I really like this print. I really really like how it's turned out. Very pleased with the paint job, very simple paint job but it works perfectly and you can see why this red dinosaur has worked well in this region because look at those beautiful red flowers and this red undergrowth. It's a very colourful world and yeah very very pleased with man cuddling dinosaur. That can now go on display and I can start the next one of this series which is going to be Girl Riding Bear, I believe.
Well, there we are. That was a really fun little build um, and the results are brilliant. It's been sat in my lounge now for a little while and I love looking at it. Uh, I love the little details, particularly that little daffodil. That was a nice little touch uh, and really does add something, a little Easter egg to go and look for, uh, which you won't see immediately, but if you look closely, you will. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know if you like that, if you don't like it. Let me know if you've done something similar. Um, I have made another now in this series, which I'm nearly finishing as I stand here recording this outro and about to publish this video. Um, so yeah, I'm really having a, good, a lot of fun with uh, a series of um, people with animals, I suppose, is, is what it is. We've had two dinosaurs. The next one is not a dinosaur. Um, it, it is a bear. So uh, yeah, and I'll be keeping this guy up. I hope if I keep finding cool things to print. So anyway, as I say, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think. And as always, please stay healthy, stay safe, and stay well.